Right, hello folks, I'm just going to do an unboxing of this brand new Campark 4K trail camera I've just bought. As you can see, the model is called a T90. It's the first 4K trail camera I've ever owned. I do already own four of their 1080p model that looks like this. So I bought four of these and um, I've been impressed with them. So I trust the Campark brand. I have to say, one of the four that I bought does make a slightly weird kind of a squeaky noise when you record videos. There's something slightly wrong with one of the ones I bought, but three of the four have been perfect so far. Um, so anyway, that's why I've decided to stick with this Campark brand. Obviously there are hundreds of brands of trail cameras these days. Um, back in the day I used to use Bushnell ones. And they used to cost me about £250 each. The 1080p Campark model you see here, I think I bought these for about £60 each or something like that. Um, and this one here that I've just bought, I managed to get a 4K one for just over £60 on eBay. But that's because nobody else bid on it. <laughs> and that was the starting price. So um, I've, I've actually noticed that if you go to the Campark website, which is campark.net. So let's just show you. On campark.net they sell them for $119.99. That's obviously in USA. That price wouldn't be available in England. But just to show you, it's exactly the same model. And so I went to Google and I typed in dollars to pounds and that gives you this tool so you can do it so 119.99 US dollars is 89 pounds and 51 pence so 90 pounds basically um, is what they're trying to sell for and I got one for 60 pounds on eBay brand new so and one other thing before I even start filming I was looking around on Amazon as well for trail cameras and I found one that looks exactly the same and I mean exactly the same look at look at the picture of this on on Amazon look at that the design of that now look at the box of this. That is exactly the same model. I don't care what you say. It's just simply had Campark printed on, onto it. That's the same model. And they're calling it a brand WeChamp. So WeChamp, I'm pretty sure, is exactly the same as what Campark have printed on it. So perhaps they're made in the same factory and they're selling that for £60. So price I paid on eBay, you can get one on Amazon. But I don't know anything about this WeChamp brand. I couldn't really find much when I did a quick Google about them. I can't find anything that says, you know, Campark branded stuff is, is made in the same factory as WeChamp. So I don't know anything about that brand. But based on looks, I would say that's exactly the same camera. So anyway, let's get around to the unpacking. Uh, literally, it just arrived in that it was in a, one of those tight plastic bags. No, no bubble wrap, no packaging, nothing. Fortunately, the box seems to be okay, but I wish they'd have padded it more, to be honest. Well, you can see there is a little dent. It's not perfect. It's then being cheap on the packaging on eBay. So anyway, let's open it up and see what we get. And I literally have never opened this, so I might have to do some cutting of plastic and stuff. Put it down so I can get this out. So the camera just flops out. That's not really securely put in. Um, so the camera's in the bag. And then let's just pull this apart so I can get everything else out. See what happens. So, cardboard that can be recycled. Tip over now. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to film the entire box so you can see exactly everything. This this is just to help you with your buying decision. So, you can use Wi-Fi on it. I've never used Wi-Fi on my 1080p ones simply because it, it's not a lot of use. You have to be really close to the um, actual camera for the Wi-Fi to use. And where I set them up in Woodlands, it's nowhere near where I could use my own home Wi-Fi sort of thing. So, so far that's a useless feature to me. It says, you can see the temperature range. I've never tested it in below maybe zero degrees in a couple of days when I've had them outside and it's continued to work. Plus 60 degrees, God, I hope I never experienced that temperature. And you can see the trigger speed of this, that is really fast. 0 0.2 second trigger speed. I can't remember what the 1080p model is. I think it's 0.3 seconds, so I think that's quicker than the 1080p one. But you'll have to double check that. Back of the box, you've got some details about it. So if you were to set it to record uh, still images, photographs, you can sell it as high as 24 megapixels per photo. So that's incredibly good detail. 4K light, I've yet to see an explanation of what 4K light means. I know what 4K is, but what is 4K light? Um, and you can also set it lower if you want to 
2.7K, 1080p, something. So lower resolution if you want to, if you wanted to say fit more videos onto an SD card, you could set it at a lower resolution. 850 nanometer infrared um, low glow lights. Now the logo li low glow lights, let me just show you. They are inside of this, in where that black glassy look is, the, the bulbs, are basically the LED lights are inside of there. Um, let me just see. Hold on a second, let me just, I'm going to turn on my 1080p one. Oh no, it might not work, no, because that's, sorry, no, forget it. Anyway, let's have a look at the camera. Oh, right, let me finish filming the back of the box. So, uh, trigger distance up to 20 meters away. And I have to say the 1080p model, it does work. Things that are that sort of distance can trigger the camera to go off. Um, and I believe they're triggered by heat. I used to think it was triggered by motion. But I think I read on one of the manuals that it's triggered by um, heat is what causes... So a temperature difference is what causes the camera to go off, but I'll look in the instructions for this one. And that waterproof thing, I have to say I have left these outside in the rain many times. Whenever I can in my garden, I, um, as well as having the unit outside, I always try and put an extra bit, see where my hand is, my hand, I, I always try and put some sort of piece of plastic or something above the camera as much as possible, where in places where I can, because even though they're waterproof, I want them to last as long as possible. I want to get my money's worth. So I also, if you can, I would recommend putting some sort of cover above the camera to keep them uh, as little water from going on as possible. And of course, birds. Birds birds will see that and think, oh, I'll stand on here and do a poo. And then you end up with poos all over your camera. So if you can, protect it. At first glance, that is ridiculously light. That feels, let me just compare it to the other one. Well, this one that's got cam uh, batteries in, that feels about... I'm not joking, that feels about four times heavier. I don't understand why that's so light. Let me just quickly take the batteries out of the 1080p one. Hold on, folks. This does need to be figured out. I'll just show you. So the 1080p one runs off eight AA batteries, and these also run off eight AA batteries. And in the um, description, they always say use alkaline batteries. They don't say um, that you can use rechargeable ones. And I've had to contact support for Cam Park before, and they and they again say don't use rechargeable. Well, that's just not feasible for me. I would be spending a small fortune on batteries if I didn't use rechargeables. So I know that in the 1080p model, rechargeable ones do work. Um, so as you can see, I use these N loop ones, and they can be recharged about a thousand times. So right now that the battery's out of it, let me pick it up again. Okay, now that now it's really light. It's the batteries that produce all the extra weight okay so yeah similar in weight now okay right that's one more mystery solved before you use it obviously you can see there's a little bit of plastic you have to tear off the lens there can you see that you might not be able to see i can just see that there's a tiny lip there ah oh, there you go if i put my thumb can you see that that's peeling off you see that i'm sure there are people out there that go and record and then they get fuzzy pictures and think oh it's not working make sure you take the plastic off any of the bits I don't know whether they put any over these sensors here they probably yes they have you've also got to peel them off the three sensors okay so there's plastics removed from there let's have a look at undoing this hold on a minute I need to move some stuff out of the way so let's see how do you undo the buckle so simply pull it towards you pull the other one towards you So I've undone that. How do I get it to release? Does it completely come off? Oh, okay. Once you've done that, you then have to lift that right out of the way. Lift that right out of the way. No, nope, that still doesn't want to open, does it? How on earth? Oh, God, it was just really tight fit. Okay, eventually that pulls apart. And, uh, oh. I can just see... That must be one of those plastic covers that's come off 
Why is there plastic there? There's not one where that finger is there, but there's, one, there's something there. And there's not one on that there. So why is that one there? Does that come off? Yeah, I think that's simply the one that was there. Has, has attached to there. Okay. That's not part broken. Okay. So I'll peel it off while I think of it. Right. Let's stick that somewhere out of the way. So, and then you've also got plastic over the... Over there. Oh. Actually, I have to leave it on because it's pointing at the buttons. <laughs> um, power switch is there on the side. So that's how you turn the unit on. So you've got on, set up and off. That's the same as on the 1080p model. SD slot is pointing here. So there's the SD card slot. It's not a micro SD card slot, it's the normal SD card size. Um, in case you have no idea what I'm talking about, I'll just take one out of the 1080p model. So, that's what an SD card looks like compared to an AA battery in terms of size, you can get the idea. So it's a couple of centimetres across by about three centimetres high, roughly. And extremely thin, maybe a couple of millimetres. Uh, the brand I use, I nearly always use SanDisk. Uh, there are other makes available, but I've tried a few other makes and they tend to fail quite quickly. There's, there's a lot of crappy, cheap brands. Don't bother. Stick to SanDisk. Make sure you get genuine ones. Um, Amazon had a problem. Somebody somehow put some fake ones on Amazon once and I bought some they didn't work. Um, now I think they've secured their supply chain better. So Anyway, SanDisk Ultra, and you can see that writes at 120 meg megabytes per second. I'll look into the instructions and see how many megabytes a second this records at in 4K. You might need a faster card for 4K. And the capacity is 64 gigabytes. So that, when I use the 1080p model, I can get um, over 100, maybe 150 one minute videos in 1080p easily fit onto this SD card. So that gives you an idea of how many videos you can make before the batteries run out. I should say I would actually be able to get even more videos on onto a card like this, but um, again, I'll, I'll leave some information under the video in the written description to tell you how many videos to expect to get, etc. So, I have filmed the box, so box is going out of the way. Let's get that out of the way, out of my way. That's that. What else was in the box? Let's have a look. So you've got a user manual, paper user manual for the T90 model. That seems quite thin. It's thinner than the 1080p one. Hopefully it's, uh, it's in a few languages as well. So there's not that much information. So let's, I'll, I'll do that when I've got two hands. Hold on. Right, inside the little bag here, you've got a way to put this little bracket on here. And this here, so you've got a flat stand for it. I've never bothered to use these because I set them up in different ways, but you've got that. Hold on, I need two hands. Um, at the bottom of the unit, can you see you've got that there to thread that little thing onto. So that would go on the bottom. But anyway, it would you, you can attach it like that, and then that can be attached to there, for example. You can you can set it up. Um, you can obviously you can attach that to a side of a wall if you wanted to. You, they give you some screws or attach it to a fence or whatever. So that's just a flat base to use if you want to attach it to a fence post or a gate or something like that. So far, I haven't used these bits and bobs. So you've got those things. Let's move those out of the way. Uh, so you get one, two, three screws and three of those little plastic bits to go around, whatever they're called. What else have we got? We've got some sort of... Why have they given me some of these? Yeah, you've got four, four of these uh, PIR protector things. I don't know why they bothered to give you some spare ones. Maybe that was dropped in the box accidentally by the person 
building it, I don't know. I'll have to see, because I've actually bought a second model, so I'll be able to see if they compare. I'll open up the second box, see if you also get that in the other one. So you've got four of those clear bits there. That's just part of the box, the cardboard that's broken off. Chuck that out of the way. Uh, you've got the USB cable. Let's just see how long that is. Not bag. <laughs> that was fiddly. And then you have to undo the little twisty metal things. God, I've got so many of these from all the products I've opened over the years. Right, let's open that up. Let's see how long that is. That's probably about 40 odd centimetres long, I would say, very roughly without measuring it. 40 to 50 centimetres long, I would say that is. So you've got that. So obviously you can attach it to the USB, most computers you've got USB. Um, let's have a look. And then at the bottom of the camera unit is where you'd attach the other end, as you can see there, right at the bottom of it. So that's if you wanted to attach this to a computer to do stuff. I tend to take the SD card out of cameras and then, and then I put the SD card into one of these little card readers I use integral brand ones they're only about two pounds these things so you then stick the card into the slot there and that's how you dump the footage from your camera into your computer to then label the videos and upload them to YouTube if you do YouTube or whatever or simply to store them on a hard drive but I take the SD card out I don't bother using the USB cable usually and they also give you a strap so that you can attach the camera to a um, tree and these are useful because that is one of the most common methods to, to help you attach a camera to a tree. Let me just show you. So, oops. So you've got the little buckle bit here. So you thread the other end. God, it's, there we go. So you thread the other end through there and then at the back of the camera unit, can you see that big flat? There you go, if I look right the way through it. Let me put my finger at the other end. You see that? You've got a great big, I mean, you could get a belt through there. So you've got those two hoops at the back there to thread the um, strap through, so that you can strap the unit onto a tree. Obviously, somebody could still steal your camera, so it's best, even though they do green to camouflage them, if you've got any locks, You've also got those holes there. Let me just show you. I bought some of these locks from America. I don't know, I presume you can get buy them in England now, but uh, the ones I got were called Python uh, Master Locks, like this. Okay, so you thread the other end of the um, lock down that hole in the middle there. See that? Let me just get the other end of the cable. And this is long, This the entire cable must be about a meter and a half long um, hard to show you ah, here we go so thread the other so you would thread thread the cable through those holes there strap this lock around a tree a tree trunk or whatever you've else got a gate or something and then you thread it through this lock here and then it jams shut and you've got it locked um, so presumably inside this cable is like steel so you know if somebody really wanted to steal it they could come back and eventually cut the lock but give you a bit of peace of mind I would recommend locking them if you're leaving them anywhere away from your house so that's these jobbies I can't remember how much I paid for these to be perfectly honest you'd have to look up how much how much they were probably I don't know 30 pounds each or something like that I would have thought I can't remember because it was a few years ago now so anyway, that's those holes there for locking them to something. Those are for the strap. I don't know why you've got these bits on the back. That's completely different to the 1080p model. Let's just compare them. Back of the 1080p model looks like that. <laughs> and you, oh, you're not you're missing a thread. You've got one at the bottom on both of them. You don't have one on the back, so you can't fix it flat. But what are these things? That's rather odd. I don't know what they are. To be perfectly honest, um, I have to ask Cam Park to explain what those things are on the back, and then what have we got here. 
powered by 8 AA batteries or DC 6 volt input. And again, I've never bothered plugging them into a power supply. Um, that little rubber bit at the bottom, let me put that down again, I need another hand. Let's get some more light on here. Let me try and get this. God, they don't make it easy. Right, so it's quite awkward to open up. They give you a tiny little rubber lip to open up. There you go, that's that's where you would stick it onto a 6 volt power supply, right at the bottom of the unit. Um, I've never done that because again you'd have to have the camera close enough to wherever you've got a 6 volt power supply. So, And there's a tiny hole at the bottom there. I wonder if that's the sound. See that hole, tiny hole? Maybe that's the sound. Anyway, so that's what the unit looks like on the outside. Um, at the top of the unit, what are those things there? Again, I haven't looked at the instructions yet, so I'm just showing you that's very different to um, the 1080p model. I don't know, I've got no idea what those impressions are at the top. The, the 1080p model is completely flat. Top of this unit's got those weird bits there, so... God, that's so strange looking compared to the other one. And I presume they put these green bits across the uh, where you've got the LEDs in order to make it look more camouflage. Otherwise, you've got this great big shape out in the wild. You know, you might notice something that looks that shape there. It's kind of obvious, like that is a little bit more disguised. Anyway, so anyway, that's what it looks like. Um, the actual lens that you record is where my thumb is there, right in the middle. Um, no, I may have just got that wrong. Hold on. <laughs> Note the lens is that one up there at the top. That's the lens. That's what you. That's where you're recording from. And these three here, the sensors that detect. I believe it's temperature, not motion. But I'll have to look in the instructions. So that is obviously forward facing. That would detect something right in front of the camera. And these are angled to the side, so that, for example, say I'm an animal here, an animal would be detected to the side of the camera. So the camera would be triggered within a couple of seconds. By the time the camera is triggered. The, the animal or whatever is now in front of the camera that's recording. So that's why they angle them to the side. That is, that's a clever idea to do that. So let's have a quick look inside this now. As you can tell, I don't do quick videos. I like to be thorough. Because when people buy products, you know, quite often the descriptions aren't helpful enough. A couple of photos on the website don't do things justice. You need to show people what you're getting. So... Inside, there you go, you can see the low glow lenses. These are not no glow. You can get no glow, but they become on much more expensive cameras. So you can just about make these out, well, on the 1080p model, you can just about make out a little reddish glow um, when it's pitch black outside. The camcorder, if I was to film this, the camcorder makes them look really bright. It's But human eye, you get a reddish glow. So that's all of these are the low glow lights and you've got three up there that um, appear to be well they don't just appear to be they are a different color so again I'll have to look in the instructions and see why there's three that appear white like that so that's the inside that's the buttons you would use to go through the settings I'll make another video of how to set this up this is just an unboxing video an actual how to set it up and get it recording I will make another video of. Okay, so battery ejection. Let's see what happens when we do battery ejection. Um, hello. Ah, oh, good, good. You have to really press that. I didn't want to press it too hard in case I broke something. That That's quite stiff. Press that and then this bit comes flying out the bottom. <laughs> and... Again, I need two hands. Let me put the camcorder down. Does this come out completely? Uh, yes. I think it's going to come out completely. Yes, it does. So the entire battery compartment does come out eventually. Let's get a bit of light down there. Let's see if I can show you. Yeah, you can see that right inside the unit there. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see right at the bottom connections for the batteries there okay so this is the battery compartment 
please insert this side up into the camera so you've got a sticker stuck on there so you can make sure you get the batteries the right way round. Um, so remember to put it in that way folks. Okay, so the batteries look like they're going to drop out. And then obviously, bottom of the battery goes onto the springy bit, always. Okay, bottom, bottom, bottom. So the top, top part of the battery goes onto the little flat connection there. So you put your eight batteries in there. And that's just mostly, mostly plastic unit. Right, let's put this down. And I'm going to do a quick look at what else I got. Um, what else was in the... Oh, I got one of these eBay cards about dear valuable customer. Let me just check there isn't any personal details. I don't want to give away the seller's information. Um, any questions about the product, they've given me an email address. Okay, that's the, this particular seller. And then they've given me a 10% off discount if I buy another one, etc. Three year extends three year warranty. Ah, that's another thing. I wonder what kind of guarantee or warranty. You've got. Anyway, let's get through to the instruction manual. I'll film this when I do the setup video as well. I'm just going to give you a very quick, a very quick look through. Hold on, let me put the camera up a bit higher. That's better. Okay, so you got support email, English. Contents, information about the strap, packaging list. In the packaging list, there's no instruction about those four plastic covers for lenses. I reckon that was accidentally dropped in by someone who built the device, to be honest. Um, so structure showing you the buttons, etc. You've got some diagrams, side of the unit. Prep before use, they tell you about batteries and uh, SD cards, how to start it, using the camera and setup. I'm only doing this quickly, I'll do it, I'll do it in more detail on the actual um, video I make showing you how to set it up. I'll show this in instruction manual a bit better. How to set the time and date, language, how to set the Wi-Fi. Uh, how to use the Wi-Fi app. I haven't got an app on my phone yet. I don't think I'll bother getting one to be honest. App connection. Install the camera, showing you how to get it set up at the right angles, etc. And I found you get really good quality pictures when, when an animal is about a meter in front of the camera. Any further away and you know the quality is not going to be so good. You do they do need to be pretty close to the cameras to be honest. If you if you want really good detail. Within a meter or two is best, I've found. Um, technical specs there. Simple troubleshooting information. And then it goes on to other language Dutch, uh, uh, German, sorry, Deutsch, German, isn't it? <laughs> and yeah, that's it. So I'll, I'll, I'll write some more information underneath the video about how many videos you can expect to get once I've used the camera and I'll know how many it actually records onto an SD card and at what write speed. I'll ask Campart what write speed you need for a card. Um, anyway, there you go. That was my unboxing video for the Campark T90. I hope that's been of use to you. Um, click like if you like this. Subscribe to me. Don't forget to look at my other videos. And look out, I will, in a few days time, I'll make a video showing you how to actually set this unit up, how to put the batteries in, the SD card, how to go through the things to set up at your recording time and quality, etc. Anyway, for now, thank you for watching, folks. Bye-bye.